from Los Angeles. It's the Tom Market Show. My advice to you, start drinking heavily. And now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacka or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's the Friday after Thanksgiving, and we never work the Friday after Thanksgiving. We're taking the day off. And in lieu of that, we're playing back some of our favorite moments from the past. We'll have a brand spanking new show or two next week. In the meantime, I want to tell you about the Buddy Ball coming up on uh, Friday, December 9th at the Playboy Mansion. We're looking for Guado Girls uh, to populate this event. By the way, girls, uh, you can be a pro to be a Guado Girl, but if you're a 9 or a 10, you may be a model with a headshot or more. Uh, You may be, uh, well, aspiring actress, singer, whatever. And if you are, uh, send us your photo and all the details about yourself, and you might be a Grotto Girl. Get to come to the Playboy Mansion and hang with us. Send it to the Grotto Girls at AOL.com. The Grotto Girls at AOL.com. Let's start this hour with Darcy. Yeah, I got really, like, smashed two weeks ago, and I lost my virginity. <laughs> How'd you do that? Well, me and my friend, um, we went down to Newport Beach. You know, we were just, like, just going down there just for fun. And right when we got out of the car, these two guys approach us and tell them to come, you know, to like they're having a party or something. So we go with them, and they got a really nice house and stuff, and, you know, they seem like nice guys. And they just kept handing us these drinks, and we don't usually drink. So, you know, we start drinking and stuff. We all end up in this room together, and uh, my friend, she she passed out on the bed, and the, me and this guy started, like, making out. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I don't really, I didn't really know him. And uh, and you didn't even know him, okay? And my friend's like passed out on the bed, and he's now like, do you even live in Newport Beach? No, I don't. Where do you live? Long Beach. That's quite the trip. Yeah, yeah. And um, he started like you know, reaching down my pants and stuff. Yeah, and, and you started not doing anything about it. And yeah, and I started not doing nothing about it. Well, you know, I was really drunk, and uh, uh. I didn't mind it. Ah, uh, so so how long was it before your clothes were off? How long? Yeah. Um, I, well, I didn't get completely naked because my friend was laying there on the bed at the time. So you didn't want her to see you naked? No. You didn't mind if she saw you getting screwed, but yeah. you uh, seeing you naked. That's where you well, draw I, the line. I figured she, you know, she's passed out. What, you know, couldn't hurt anything. Uh huh. But um, once we started, you know, going at it, it really hurt. So I was trying not to, you know, make any noises or anything. Yeah. I didn't want to wake her up. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so I felt uh, like... I mean, or, any noises like, ow! Yeah. <laughs> noises <laughs> like that? There. Oh, my God. Yeah. So this was not fun for you? Well, no. Well, actually, yeah, I felt... I, I don't know. I guess it should be fun, but it kind of hurt. Yeah. That happens first time around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but uh, you were drunk, and you were just going for it. <laughs> Yeah. Uh-huh. I don't know if I'd do it again. With but... a complete stranger. Huh? With a complete yeah, stranger. That's not like me. No. Oh. I don't do stuff like that. You do now. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. Uh, 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 uh. How old was he? Um, 47. Yeah, he was kind of older. I'm I'm only 19, so. Uh, Newport Beach, probably some uh, 50-something guy who owned a boat down there, right, at Corona yeah. Del Mar, right? Yeah, he had a really nice house. Oh, yeah, I bet he did. It was. Gray hair? Huh? Gray hair? Yeah, and I gave him my phone number and stuff, but he never called me. Really? <laughs> yeah. Are you serious? No, he never called so, me back. So you're 19, this guy's like at least 40, probably 50, right? <laughs> He was pretty old. Later that hour, we got a call from Darcy's mom, Beth, who heard Darcy's phone call. Actually, I'm a little upset right now. Why is that? Ah, I just heard my daughter on your radio show. Who was your daughter? Darcy. Darcy! Yes! Darcy was the caller who uh, got uh, plowed down to Newport Beach and ended up doing some uh, 40- or 50-something-year-old guy. Oh, well, I didn't really get the age. 
Well, she didn't, wasn't sure what his age was. Oh, my but God. We can guess from uh, where he was located in Newport Beach. I heard the... Balding, story. gray hair, beer belly. Uh, <laughs> probably one of those swinging singles down in Corona Del Mar. You know the ones I'm talking about? Uh, no, not really. No? No. You ever been up to the Newport Beach area? There's all these... Uh, uh, I used to live in Newport Beach. Oh, right. So you know about the marina out there, and you got all these boats, and you got a lot, it's like Marina del Rey. You got a lot of these guys out there, like you know, divorced, looking for wife number two or wife number three. Right. And they're all out there on the boat. That's right. You know what I'm talking about. Right. They all yeah. hang around the piano bar at the Villa Nova. Well, right now I'm I'm shaking. I'm very upset with what I heard because the story that I was told the next day when she was pretty hungover was that um, these two. Gentlemen stole money from them. I suppose she didn't tell you that. They stole money from them. That's what she told you. That's what she told me. She didn't tell me that. That, that they got very, very drunk by these two young boys who had a beautiful home up in Newport Beach. Uh huh. And they were about in their 20s, maybe 30s, and invited them to a party. And they got drunk and, and uh, they escorted them into one of the guest rooms and they spent the night there. Uh, and I asked her if she learned her lesson, and she said, yeah, I learned my lesson. I'm never going to do anything like that again. I told her it was dangerous, and we kind of ended the subject. And then when I was listening to your show today, I heard, I, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Man. So, I, you're, so you're shocked. Abs- oh, yeah. She's a, she's a, a cheerleader at Fullerton J.C. College. Uh, she was just accepted at the Fullerton J.C. College cheer, and she's never had a boyfriend ever. And she lives in Long Beach? No, she goes to to uh, Fullerton JC. Well, she told us she, she lived in Long Beach, so I guess she was I guess she was trying to protect her identity from like mom and other people. Right, but she knows I listen to the show every day. Oh, she's she knows a... I listen to it, so that's why I'm you know. And she, whenever I turn the radio on to listen to you, she tells me, "Can I listen to something else?" You know, she doesn't want to listen, but I, you know, I'm floored. Wow. I knew exactly who was on the phone. Did you really? Yes, I did. Oh. I absolutely did, and I, I. I really don't know how to address the issue when I get home tonight, but it's going to be addressed. Does she live at your home? She sure does. She does. Yeah, and she's listening. And Darcy, if you're listening to me right now, you wait. Yeah, she's listening right well, now. Well, I I don't think we can wait that long. We better deal with that right now. Darcy, is that you? Yes. <laughs> is that your mom? Darcy. Yeah. Your mom. Hi. 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 Guess what? <sighs> Guess what? I was listening to the Tom Lika show. And guess what I heard? What? All about your party. Now, I, what I want to know is, is it true? <laughs> is it true? Answer me. Why do you, Mom, I don't want to talk about this stuff with you. <laughs> and do you want to know that? <laughs> you know I listen to this show, like, every day there. Well, you're away. Well, what makes you think that I what, didn't hear what you were saying on the phone? What makes you think that I didn't hear his show? I mean, you're the one that doesn't listen to it. Are you there? Yeah. You're not answering me. I don't want to answer you. Why? I don't think you need to know. It's it's not your business. It's my business, Darcy. When you got to, you know, when somebody does something like for the first time, they get on national radio and they announce it to the whole world that this is something that they did the very first time they got drunk. I thought that that was something that was special between the two of us when you came home and told me that you got drunk and that you'll never do it again. And then all of a sudden, as Tom Likas puts it, you got plowed and then got plowed again. (laughs) Hello? Yeah? I guess we'll just I guess we'll just talk about it when How I'm... old was he about uh, 40 or 50 what was the deal on that Darcy? I don't I don't know how old he was. How old was he really Darcy? He was, I mean he wasn't that old. He had gray hair, right Darcy? <laughs> no. It, you didn't say that? It was dyed. It was it was Oh, it was dyed, but it was gray. He just dyed it. <laughs> I don't know, you know. Could have been. Okay Darcy, we're going to let you off the hook. Okay. Are you mad? Oh, I'm yes, I'm I'm real mad. I'm beyond that, to tell you the truth. Now, Beth, let me ask you a question, okay? Do now cuz I know other mothers and daughters and stuff. Most daughters, at least the first time they have sex, don't just go running home to mom and say, "Guess what? Yeah. Yeah. I just got drunk and got late." 
Well, I just I thought that we had an open relationship. I'm I not going to tell you that kind of stuff. I don't ask you about dad, do I? Well, I just thought I'd brought you up a little differently. I thought I'd brought you up with a little, you know, with morals and, I have and morals. values and, you know, i got to go. I'm uh, going to hang up. And I'll talk to you when I get home tonight, okay? Yikes. All right, Beth, thank you. Darcy? Yeah. Oh, boy, you're in trouble. <laughs> Wow. Oh, God. Uh-oh. Okay. What, what are you going to do now? I'm going to go kill myself. Oh, no, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. I'm going to go look for a place to live. Oh, boy. <laughs> your mom called right in. You know, I don't know what... Yeah, you're, she listens to your show, so... Uh, yeah, I, I, I know. Wait, hang on a second. Hang on okay. a second. Let me get Debbie on here. Well, don't go anywhere, Darcy. Debbie. De- 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 no, you don't know Debbie. Okay. Okay, well, Debbie. Debbie, what did oh you want to say? No, that's my friend's mom. No, no, no. That's, she's in Seattle. She's not She's not, not in Fullerton or any such place. Uh, uh, Debbie, what did you want to say about Bat? I just wanted to say that your mother is just awful. I know. <laughs> she, should be more she is such a prude. I'm right. sorry, but when I was having sex when I was a teenager, I sure as hell didn't tell my mom. I know. <laughs> I know. You know and I, I, she, you? she's told me plenty of bad things that she's done. <laughs> oh, really? Well, uh, here's your chance, Darcy. What were those? <laughs> I know that she's, uh, <laughs> no, I don't, I don't, she's probably still listening. Oh, don't worry about it. <laughs> huh? You're already in enough trouble. What, how much worse could it get? <laughs> she already humiliated you. Here's your turn. I know. <laughs> no, I'm not, I can't, I can't. I'm going to die. <laughs> she's already going to kill me. My God, you're an adult, Darcy. I know. Absolutely. I know. <laughs> it's not my fault. That's right. I'm only human, right? Everybody has these urges. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so their mom. Now, now, Darcy, oh. da- Darcy, tell us now. I mean, tell us why you didn't tell your mom the truth, because uh, I'm I'm fascinated with that. Why? Yeah. Because, because she she thinks I'm a good girl. Uh huh. And you know, I'm sure she doesn't expect me to go out and drink and. Like like, ev- like every mom thinks about like her daughter. Then yeah, you know. Yeah. How old was your mom when she first uh, <clears throat> uh, got drunk? Oh well, yeah. What she tells me is that she, you know, she didn't have sex until she was married. Oh really? Yeah, but but me, me and my friend figured it out. See, she she got pregnant before she got married. So really, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that maybe you were uh, premature like so many back then? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, why did you wait till you were nineteen? Because I was going to save myself for marriage. All right, so you were a good girl, and you waited longer than uh, most girls these days. Yeah, I still well, I still plan on waiting, even though you know, it's kind of late. Yeah, <laughs> a little late for that, huh? That horse left the barn. <laughs> oh God, I can't. Believe that old mom. goat left the barn. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. <laughs> show so some of our favorite moments from the past this is gina i disagree with you on that all women put out on the first date all women who are sexually active have put out on the first date for someone not all women because i haven't so how many dates do you wait Pro- um usually no more or a week or so a week and what does that prove um it just Proves that, you know, if you really are going to, you know, get into a relationship with a person, that you're willing to wait those extra few days. Uh, guess what? Most of us aren't willing to wait because most of us don't intend to get into a relationship with you when we meet you. I think my fiancé would disagree with that point. Well, your fiancé is a, your fiance's a pussy. You made him wait two months? Yeah. He's a pussy. A, he's a pussy. And B, he was getting it somewhere else while he was waiting. No, he wasn't. Yes, he was. He was over at my house every night. Every night for two and sixty straight nights. I doubt that. Mm, yep. Doubt it. Uh, you want to ask him? Yeah, put him on. Hello. What's your name? Uh, my name is Herbert. Herbert. Yeah. All right, Herbert. Were you at Gina's house sixty straight nights without sex? Yes. 
Uh, what's the matter? Was your uh, penis shot off or something? How how were you uh, able to wait 60 straight nights, and what was your incentive to do so? Well, one, because who is a man will wait for a female to give it out? Well, I think the song in the background says it all. Nope. See, in, in, in a way... Yes, Herbert. See, in a way, my dad, um, I'm a real man who will wait uh -huh. for a female pull out. Hey, really? I'll bet you've waited for more than one. What? I'll wait for my, all mine. Yeah, I'll bet some of them never put out at all. Well, me, I'll wait. Okay. I'll bet some of them never put out for you, Herbert. Okay. Dad, I'm not, I'm not arguing with about it. I'll bet you won't. Because Herbert, what, what what was the last grade you completed? Uh, uh, twelve. Twelve. Yes. And what uh, what was your grade point average in high school? Three point five. Three point five, really? Yep. Were you in special ed or something? What was the deal? I'm in in, in LD. LD, what's that? Learning. Um, learning. Um, I'm very so learner. By the way, I want to point out to the audience the kind of guy who waits two months for a woman to put out. You're listening to him right now. Uh, where did you become so articulate? When? Yeah. Um, whenever I a newborn baby. What about a baby? I was, okay, whenever I just be, whenever I'm in um, PK. What? In a um, home. While I'm just beginning um, school. When you were just beginning school, you became yeah. articulate like this. Yeah. I see. Well, were you the valedictorian at your high school? No. No? I'm shocked. A man of your articulation? Well, that I don't know I see. how it come about. And um, now here you are with Gina. By the way, how old is her child? Um, she has no time. Really? Really. And now you have sex with her? Yes. How often? Two, three times a week. Two or three times a week. How is it? Good. Is it? Yep. And now you're going to marry her? Yes. What do you do for a living, Herbert? A cook. You're a cook? Yes. And what is your plan for the future, Herbert? To start my own business. Really? And what would that be? Um, any, uh, maybe a restaurant job. Restaurant job or something like that? Uh-huh. Why didn't you go to college, if I may ask? Well, because I don't, I'm not smart enough to go to college. Oh, you're not that smart? What? I see. So, again, let me reiterate, uh, this is the kind of man, perfect example of a man who, who would wait two months before his girlfriend put out. What reason did Gina give you for not putting out, Herbert? Well, it's, it's no reason at all. Anyway, to wait for me. Okay, anyway, to wait to see if I. Okay, some guy will leave if me and I will not put out. Now, uh, did you try anything on the first date, Herbert? The first date, no. How about the second date? Second date, no. How about the third date? Third date, no. How long did you wait to try something? Um, about two months. So you didn't even try anything for the first two months? No. Really? Because, I, because I'm not like that. I'm not like that. I see. How many women have you had sex with, Herbert? Had sex with? Truthfully, um, about maybe three. Three. And did you wait two months for them? You are. I, on my, on my second one, no. How long did you wait for her? On um, second date. Second date. And what was different about Gina? Because I know with Gina is one I, in a way, I fell in love with Gina. I see. Is All she... the rest, I don't love. Don't, it don't, in a way, I have no feeling for all my ex. I see. But Gina. I see. Where are you from, Herbert, if I may ask? From Texas. You're from Texas? I see. Well, you certainly are articulate. There's no question about that. Hang on, let me put Jeff on a second. Don't go anywhere, Herbert. Jeff, say, well, hi, I'm 
Say Long-time hi. listener, first-time caller. Thank you so much. Say hi to Herbert. That's Gina's hi. boyfriend there. Hey, Herbert. How's it going, man? Tom, dude. Oh, we're all smiling and laughing out here, but you got to give this guy a break, man. You think so? He's a, he's a couple of six-packs short of a case, dude. It's, you know... I mean, it's one thing when somebody's willfully being a pussy. It's another thing when it's just not quite understanding. Herbert had a 3.5 GPA. I think he's more than qualified to stand up for himself. In LD, right, maybe. Herbert? Look, okay, one, why don't set up on, on myself? Because I'm not one to pick a fight. If oh, I, if hey, man, guy, I'm not here to fight with you. Why? I'm, on your, I'm on your side, brother. <laughs> okay, see, well, okay, Tom, why, okay? Because I'm not one, if you want to argue with somebody, I'm not one to argue with. Because I'm one to, I'm a lover, I'm not a father. And who's writing your material there, Herbert? Nobody. Really? Gina didn't really? write that down and tell you what no. to say? This really? is coming from my heart. Really? Yes. And you are not reading it? No. You, you, want, you want me to put her back on the phone and you ask? Sure, put her on the phone. Okay. Go ahead. Hi. Hi. That's Albert Einstein you're marrying there. That's great. <laughs> wow. Oh, Gina. Gina, you really done yourself well there. You did all right. Yeah, and he's not one of those people, you know, that, um, you know, those rich men. Really? Right. Right. Gina, did you... What did you graduate high school with? And that's why you made him wait two months, because he's not one of those rich men. You proved my point, Gene. I graduated in 12th grade and now in college. That's great. Wow. And by the way, can I ask a question, Gina? Like when Herbert has to go down to like the DMV to fill out an application, do you go down there and like tell him like where to put his name and stuff? No. No, he knows how to do that? Yes, he knows how to do that. He does sound a few IQ points short, uh, you must admit. He... He's slow at getting things out, but he does know how to do it. Uh huh. So I, mean, I, I, I hope you, you, you realize what kind of a, what kind of a point you've proven here. This is the kind of man who waits two months. Mm hmm. I would say that an articulate man with a three digit IQ probably would wait a little less. Yeah, that would have to be me, Tom. I wouldn't wait that long. Well, then, um, you're just not a man because a man will wait, and that's what uh, he's been taught. He will open the door for me. Well, you know, if you were dating Rain Man, I guess he'd wait, too. Well, I mean, and I you're not far from that now. open a door for a female. That's great. You know, not one that, you know, just, oh, well, you can do it yourself. He probably works down at the Goodwill, uh, soldering wires and stuff, right? No. Oh, he's a cook. That's right. Yes. Where does he cook? Um, it's the World Trade Center of Seattle. Yes. This is a gourmet restaurant? It's a club with, they have ten units, ten different, you know, subsidiaries. I see. And, and they're one of the smaller ones, but they do do business. He is, was at work almost 12 hours. Um, what kind of food does Herbert make? Oh, all kinds. It's wonderful. Really? It, yes. He is a really good, um... Chef. Hang on a second, Gina. Let me get Toby on here. Hey, Toby, say hi to Gina. Hi, Gina. I just got to tell you, Gina, how dare you take advantage of that man? I don't. Yes, you. Oh my God, listen to him. Now nah, she waited two months to take advantage of it. He's like a he's like a, a like a little ball of silly putty, but sillier. Remember what Gina said. He's slow getting things out. No, actually, you know... Um, yeah, he was slow uh, getting that zipper down, too. <laughs> That's right. No, actually, he's not. And um, he was the one that suggested waiting, so... He did? Yes. Because he's slow getting things out. No. <laughs> no, because he understands everything. So I'll bet the two of you have that. a lot of intellectual conversations at home, don't you? Yeah, very much. Really? Yeah. Why don't you put Herbert on? I, I want to have an intellectual conversation with him right now. Why? This is my talk. Well, no, I'll get back to you, Gina. I just want to have an intellectual conversation with him. That's all. Hey, Tom, just ask him how to spell restaurant. I ask him how to spell Herbert. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't go that low. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. All right, Herbert. Herbert, I understand that you and Gina have a lot of intellectual conversations at home. Yeah. Really? What what kinds of intellectual conversations do you have? 
Um, you name it, we have it. Really? So did you discuss, uh, for example, the presidential election? Well, about the, the, who will be the president? Yes. The president, yes. Yes. Yes, and uh, who did you think was going to win? This guy from Texas. Which guy was that? George Bush. Uh huh. And uh, who was the loser? Um, Al Al Gore. I see. And who did you vote for? Um, Bush. You voted for Bush. Uh, tell me why. What were the uh, what are the parts of his policy statement that you agreed with? Um, every day, the whole nine yards. The whole nine yards. Well, for example, what were some of your favorites? Um, about um, tax cuts. Tax cuts. I see. And, of course, as a cook, I'm sure you're paying a lot of taxes. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. What else? Um, female whites. Female whites? Well, um, Bill, um... What are you talking about? Kind of like, um, vote, voting rights. Female voting rights. Yeah, you know, it's about time women got the right to vote, Herbert. I agree with you. Anything else? Um... So far, that's it. I see. Well, Herbert, I I know I'm impressed. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. From Los Angeles, it's the Tom Likas Show. You know, every once in a while, we do a topic called Ask the Atheist... And during one of these hours, we got a call from John. Uh, you know, I, the thing on God, I can totally appreciate your viewpoint as an atheist. Um, I'm a Christian. Uh, I uh, wasn't a Christian all my life uh, up until college when, uh, you know, I committed myself to Christ, and he gave me a spiritual gift to speak in tongues, and that's when I knew, hey, uh, this is real. I so, see. I don't know how you deny those kinds of things, and I'm, I'm not a, a freak. I'm not a, a Christian freak. I don't... Uh, you know, tell everybody what that means to speak in tongues. Well, it's a spiritual gift. It's a gift of uh, a spiritual gift that's given by God. At that time, when I was committing myself to Christ uh, and prayed with a pastor, uh, I was given a gift of. Tongues. But what does it mean? It means you you have the ability to speak in a, speak in another language that God understands, and it edifies your prayer language. I don't speak it to other people. I don't speak it at a at a term. Let's say I'm in a church. I don't speak. I just don't get up and start speaking in tongues. I, I Dean said you did it for own. him. What's that? Dean, who screened the call, said you did it for him. I did it for who? For the guy who screened the call, Dean. Yes, I did. You did, but you just said you don't do it except at church. He, he wanted an example of it. I don't just sit, sit and, and if, if someone uh, wants to have an interpretation of what I'm saying, I, I, I don't know what the language is. All I'm saying is how if I... But you can do it. Well, uh, if you could do it for Dean, you can do it for us. Sure, of course. I'd All right, let's hear it. I'd like to hear it. Now, how, if I'm not good at languages, I've taken German four or five years out of my, my life and, and still have a difficult time with language. How in the world, all of a sudden, do I have a, a language that I can speak? How do you know it's speak? a language? Because it's it, it, obviously speaking it. Don't, don't you... Uh, when you speak something, isn't that a language? Well, no. I, I, is that a language? Why would I mean, that not be a language? But if, if I just sit here and uh, do gibberish on the radio, is that a language? Now, is that a language? I spoke it. Well, I, uh, fine. I mean, I'm just telling you. Is that a language? How can I? How can I? Is that a language? That's that's gibberish. Oh, and, and what you said wasn't gibberish. I, don't, I believe not. Oh, then tell me what you said. Again, I cannot say that I can interpret what I'm saying. Well, All then, I can't saying. interpret what I'm saying either. That's fine. You can believe it. But if, if, why yeah. can I go, why can I read in the Bible uh, that God does give gifts, spiritual gifts, and one of those gifts is tongues? How do you know you have that gift? Maybe that. you're just speaking gibberish. Uh, don't believe it. A language generally has rules. It generally can be interpreted. Sure. How do you well, know that's I, a language? Why can I speak something? How do you know that's How a language? How can I speak something and then re, uh, re How do you know it's a language? I'm asking you how you know it's a language. Because it, I, 
I can sense that internally, I can sense that, hey, this isn't just, I'm not making this crap What do you mean up. internally you can sense it? How do you know that? I know it. So it's a, it's an How issue. do you know it? I, you know, I've always been, I've always thought to myself, why don't I just go down and sit in front of a linguistic for someone who understands languages, who study languages, maybe maybe old languages. The, the point is, you this, you don't know it. You believe it, but you don't I, know it. I well, I you can, can't I prove can it. Say, I can say I, I I know it from from my heart. I know it from. You don't know. Yo, your heart is not where you know things. You only know things on the right side of your brain. That's where you know things. Okay, but why why can I? How can I say? Okay, I didn't have this gift. I didn't have the ability. You believe it, but you don't know it. If I can speak in this particular language... You, it's time. not a language because you can't even tell me what you said. How can you say it's not a language? Because you, you because not there's not anybody out there who knows How what you said. You prove it's not a language? There's not any, anybody out there. I mean, what dictionary? You, haven't asked, you haven't asked Tell me what you just said. What's that? Tell me what you said. Again, Tom... See, even you, you don't even know what you're saying. Gifts. There's different gifts. You don't even know what you're I, saying. You Why is what you're, what you're saying any more language than... How do you know that that's not a language? Uh, that's fine. You can do... Blah, 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 blah. I can do that, too. How do you, what, that, how do you know it's not a language? It's my... How can, how do, do I just make that crap up? Yes. No. Yes, you did. No. No, yes, you did. Okay. What does it mean? You just believe what you believe, and, and that's what, fine. What, and I, I again, that. It, but the I point is, it is a matter of faith. Look, it is I not a matter of knowledge. Is. You don't know what that means. Tom, all I'm saying is, that, is, before I was a Christian, I didn't have this capability of speaking this language. And I didn't have the capability to go to the Bible and say, okay, it's not a language. I can read here. I can read here in the Bible, and it says, I will give gifts of, of prophecy. I will give gifts of healing. I will give gifts of... But no one will ever know what you said. So what good is the prophecy if nobody knows what you're predicting? Again, it's a, it's a prayer language to edify... All right, attention, everybody. This is important. Tom, you know, that, you, can, you can do that as much as you want. And, and I appreciate but it, it is the same understand. gibberish as you're putting out here. Yeah, but you just, you know, you believe whatever you believe. All right, why don't you conjugate one of the verbs you used in that little diatribe? I'm sorry? Why don't you conjugate one of the verbs you used in that diatribe? Which I words could. were verbs and which words were nouns? I wish I could. Which words were pronouns? Which ones were prepositions? I, I'd be were there any dangling participles? Extremely excited if Is I there could. punctuation in this language? I'm sorry? Was there an accent mark anywhere in there? You know, Tom, I... I what about a tilde? All I'm saying is I didn't have... How about an umlaut? It was a stamp in my life at the time when I, when I was trying to make some... some can you write that down and send it, it to me? Stamp on my, what you on just my said, since it's a language, can you write it down and mail it to me? I wish I could write it. Why not? Of course I. It's a language. Write it down. Yeah. Again, Tom, you don't under you don't understand this. Uh -huh. You don't understand it as as much as I don't understand it. It's a gift. It's a it's a. Spirit How do you know it's a gift? Oh, Maybe you're just understand. insane. Maybe you're just loony. Uh, I, I doubt I'm. Loony. How do I know you're not? Well, prove it. But the fact is, everybody listening knows you're loony. Hang on. Hey, uh, Kevin, what do you think of what John just did there? Stop answering a question with the question. Come on. No habla espan tongue. Hey, you know, I, it's fine to answer a question. I am not answering a question with a question. I'm just saying, look, I'm calling up. I, I was not a Christian before I had this, this capability. And when I became a Christian, I, have, I was given a gift. And that was a stamp that, hey, what I'm reading here in the Bible is real. It's a, it was a stamp of the time to say, you know what, God does exist, and I believe that, and that's my personal belief. I appreciate. Do you speak, do you speak I can to Ann on the phone for hours respect, at a time? I can respect your guys' opinion. I can respect that you are an atheist and that you don't understand uh, how God operates and, and why He operates. Yeah, but you do. Okay. Hey, I'm just giving an example. And you can quote of, me on that. <laughs> Go, go, to, go to Ephesians, Tom. Read the Bible. Maybe you'd understand a little bit. Well, the Bible, is the last I looked, was written in English. The Bible it, is it the was. words of man. And it says, I will give gifts of prophecy. Or Sanskrit. Now, that's a language. Gifts of healing, gifts of tongue. So, you yeah. know, I'm, I'm just giving an example. Why does any part of the Bible go... Well, blah, 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 blah. Tom, Tom, can you appreciate... I'm just giving you an example. Why is the Bible written in that language? Well, how would you understand the Bible, Tom? I asked you, why is it written in that language? Why is it written in what language? Why isn't it written in that uh, language that you're speaking? It's not written in that language. Why not? Speaking. Because that's not a language that you or I would understand. So but maybe it's not a language at all. But he speaks it. it. How can maybe, he speak it and not hey, Tom, understand it? Hey, Tom, maybe it isn't. Maybe it isn't a language as we understand. But maybe it's, a, maybe it's, a, it, maybe it's something that, uh, that God gave me at a particular time 
that I could read in the Bible and say, hey, this is a, there's a spiritual gift, and this ties to that. And all of a sudden I'm speaking it. I'm not, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not out there. I'm not crazy. I'm just saying this is a, this at a particular time was a gift that God gave well, me. I'll let the callers decide it. that. I'll let the callers decide that. Uh, let me thank Kevin. Uh, Fritz, what do you want to say to John here? Yeah, I wanted to say, uh, first, you're yeah. full of it. Right. And second, you, can, you can believe that. Second, Catholics don't speak in tongues. Satanists do. Okay, big guy? How do, you, how do you know that Catholics don't? Because I actually have read the Bible instead of putting it on my coffee table and staring at it. Do okay, it how do you, time, big guy. How do you, how do you say, how do you uh, return this as uh, the guy that uh, the pastor, this uh, priest at this church, uh, okay, your was mama, the one that... All right, your mama. Your, your mama, mama. That's, that's bright. That's really bright. Yes, it is, your mama. All right, yeah, well, that's real bright. Fritz and John, thank you for elevating the level of the conversation here. John like this. 1-800-5800. Tom. What's the name of this show? It's the Tom, Tom Likas like show. Show. That's right. So I'm the boss here. The Tom Likas show. Hi, girls. The Buddy Ball coming up Friday, December 9th. If you're an L.A. 9 or a 10, I don't care if you're a pro. Send us your headshot or more to the Grotto Girls at AOL.com. That's the Grotto Girls at AOL.com. The Tom Likas Show.